everybody has made a mistake or two or twenty, fortunately and sometimes unfortunately, because some mistakes actually make things better, the odds of making a mistake as monumental as those below are pretty slim. From the surgeon who killed three people in a single operation, to the dictator who got millions of his people killed following our 20 things about some of history's more fascinating mistakes. Surgeon kills three people by mistake in a single operatio. Bad doctors and medical screw-ups are not exactly rare, Indeed, thanks to negligent or outright incompetent medical professionals, there is a thriving field in the legal profession that focuses solely on medical malpractice. Fortunately for Dr. Robert Liston of London, he practiced in an era when and in a country where medical malpractice litigation was not the booming business it is today in the U.S. If not medical malpractice lawyers would have had a field day suing him for that, one time he managed to kill three people during a single surgery, two of whom were not even patients the fastest knife in the West End. Dr. Robert Liston was a surgeon known for his speed. In the days before anesthetics, an ability to operate speedily was a decided plus. It meant that patients spent less time enduring excruciating pain as a surgeon cut into them. It also increased the odds of survival, lessening the odds of patients going into shock, as well as reducing the time in which their vitals were exposed to germs and other vectors of infection. Dr. Liston was famous for being able to complete operations in a matter of seconds and amputate a leg in just two and a half minutes. Unsurprisingly, chances for a mistake were pretty high. Time me gentlemen. Dr. Liston played up his reputation for speedy surgery for all it was worth. Surgeries back then were spectator events, with galleries surrounding operating rooms for observers to watch what was going on. As he brandished his cutting tools, Dr. Liston would often shout to the audience time me, gentlemen, it became his catchphrase. During one surgery to amputate a leg, Dr. Liston accidentally severed the fingers off the hand of an assistant who was holding down the patient's leg. Liston continued with the job and took off the patient's leg. Both patient and assistant got gangrene and died within a few days. In his frenzied slicing, Dr. Liston also accidentally cut an elderly spectator's coat. The old man was not hurt but he was splattered with blood from patient's amputated leg and the medical assistant's severed fingers. Thinking that he had been wounded, the elderly spectator panicked, had a heart attack and died. The British airplane manufacturer that threatened to supplant Boeing. Today Airbus is threatening to eclipse Boeing, however until the recent 737 MAX fiasco, things had been going great for the giant American airplane manufacturer for as long as anybody could remember. For the bulk of the commercial travel era, Boeing was the dominant player in passenger planes. However, there was a time in the early 1950s when reasonable people could have predicted that the future of passenger planes belonged to Britain's de Havilland, with Boeing a distant second. The reason was the de Havilland Comet, history's first commercial jetliner, its prototype first flew in 1949, then comets hit the market in 1952. Fast and sleek, with a pressurized cabin that was comfortable, relatively quiet and featured large square windows, the Comet cut six hours of travel time between London and New York. It was the world's most promising passenger plane, then a seemingly minor design oversight turned out to be a major mistake, and doomed the pioneering jetliner. Mistake dooms a pioneering jetliner When designing the de Havilland Comet's windows, the company opted for large square windows, the decision was driven by aesthetics, square windows looked better than the traditional round porthole style windows. Unfortunately for dozens of Comet passengers who died in a series of crashes, designers back then did not understand metal fatigue. Stresses piled up at the corners of the Comet's square windows, causing catastrophic fuselage breaches mid-flight, resulting in fatal crashes. Since the Comets often broke apart at high altitudes and above water, it took time to figure out the problem. Once the culprit was identified, the entire Comet fleet was pulled out of service, the Havilland never recovered, while the Comet was being redesigned with round windows and thicker fuselages. The Boeing 707 and Douglas DC-8 hit the market and became hits with airliners. Dictator makes mistake after mistake, setting the stage for disaster. In 1941 the USSR was caught off guard when the Nazis attacked it, unprepared the Soviets reeled from the onslaught, as the advancing Germans rampaged through their country. Soviet losses were horrendous, with deaths in the tens of millions, many more wounded, 
and incalculable destruction and human suffering. The disaster was caused by a series of mistakes, for which Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin was chiefly responsible. The seeds of catastrophe were planted years earlier, during Stalin's military purge starting in 1937, that purged through the Soviet military into turmoil by removing its most experienced commanders, 13 of 15 army commanders, 8 of 9 admirals, 50 of 57 corps commanders, all 16 army commissars, and 25 of 28 army corps commissars. That was just the tip of the iceberg. Few mistakes were greater than Stalin's military purge. In addition to wreaking havoc on the Red Army's higher ranks, Stalin's military purge also decimated the best middle rank officers. Until 1937, the Soviet military had a reputation for being innovative. There was an intellectual ferment within the Red Army, such as with the Soviet military's theory of deep operations, which was as creative as anything Germany's Wehrmacht was doing at the time. The Soviets had their equivalents of brilliant German officers such as the Guderians and Mansteins, brimming with ideas for revolutionizing warfare. They suffered the most, because the purge fell heaviest on the creative and free thinking. Such officers stood out, and so were prime suspects of harboring the deviationist tendencies Stalin wanted stamped out. Thus when Hitler attacked, the Soviet military was poorly officered and poorly led. Stalin's mistake in ignoring warnings leads to disaster. Stalin compounded his mistakes in the years leading up to the German invasion, with more mistakes in ignoring warnings of impending German attack in the months before it took place, those who raised the alarm were punished. As Stalin insisted such alarms were part of a sinister plot engineered by the British to instigate a war between the USSR and Germany. Soviet commanders were forbidden to take precautionary measures, lest they provoke the Germans. Indeed, hours after the invasion had actually begun, Stalin disbelieved Soviet commanders reporting that they were being overrun, insisting that they were experiencing border incidents not war. Stalin also fancied himself a talented military man, and meddled too much, among his poor decisions were orders to counterattack, issued to units that were in no position to do so. Later he insisted that units stay put in untenable positions and fight to the last man. That led to a series of massive encirclements in which the Germans captured up to 700,000 Soviets per encirclement. By the end of 1941 the Germans had captured 3.4 million Soviet POWs, most of whom died in captivity. The USSR paid a heavy price for Stalin's mistakes. In the first six months after the German invasion, the USSR suffered over 6 million military casualties, that was aside from millions more civilian casualties. No country has ever suffered more losses in a similar period. By the time the invaders ran out of steam, the German army was deep in the USSR at the gates of Moscow. It took superhuman efforts and sacrifice for the Soviets to recover, claw their way back up and eventually win the war in the end. Stalin deserves credit for keeping the USSR in the fight long, after any other country would have thrown in the towel. However, Stalin deserves even more credit for the many mistakes that almost destroyed his country. A mistake that revolutionized medicine. Alexander Fleming was an unprepossessing Scottish doctor, pharmacologist, and microbiologist until 1928 there had been little in his decades-long career to indicate that he would revolutionize medicine and save millions of lives worldwide. Until that year, his greatest career accomplishment had to do with research on enzymes. Then Fleming discovered penicillin, the antibiotic that revolutionized medical care and saved millions of lives from fatal bacterial infections. It happened by accident, because of sloppiness and basic mistakes. Fleming's life was full of lucky breaks, born in Scotland, he moved to London, where he graduated high school before getting a job in a shipping office. That might have become his career, but an uncle died four years later, and left Fleming an inheritance that allowed him to go to medical school. A lucky career track switch. Alexander Fleming initially wanted to become a surgeon, however while serving in a reserve regiment, he was recognized as a great marksman. To become a surgeon, he would have had to leave his medical school and move away, which would have meant leaving his unit. His commanding officer did not want to lose the promising reservist. So he introduced Fleming to a prominent researcher and immunologist, who convinced him to become a researcher instead. During World War II, Fleming served in the Army Medical Corps, where he observed the deaths of many soldiers from uncontrollable infections, antiseptics were used to fight infections, 
but they often did more harm than good. Fleming conducted research, which showed that using antiseptics was a mistake when it came to serious injuries, they did nothing to stop the proliferation of anaerobic bacteria in deep wounds. His research was initially rejected, but Fleming plugged on. Millions of lives saved because of a mistake. One day in 1922, while battling a cold, Fleming transferred some of his snot to a petri dish, a slob he put it on his cluttered desk, then forgot it for a couple of weeks. When he finally remembered and examined it, the petri dish was full of bacterial colonies. However, the microscope revealed that one area of snot was free of bacteria. Further examination revealed that it was due to the presence of an enzyme, which he called lysozyme, which had some antimicrobial properties. That laid the groundwork for his discovery of penicillin. In 1928, Fleming still a lab slob, left an uncovered petri dish next to an open window, where it became contaminated with fungus spores. When he checked it under the microscope, Fleming discovered that the bacteria near the fungus were dying. He managed to isolate the fungus and discovered that it was effective against numerous pathogens that cause diseases such as pneumonia, meningitis, diphtheria, scarlet fever, gonorrhea, and many more. Thus, penicillin was discovered. As Fleming put it, I did not discover penicillin. Nature did that. I only discovered it by accident. Another of history's more beneficial mistakes. As seen above, not all mistakes result in disaster. When Christopher Columbus sailed westward from Spain in 1492, he was convinced that he was less than 3,000 miles away from Japan. A little more sailing beyond that, and he would reach the Indies, with their rich spice trade. In reality Japan is about 12,000 miles away from Spain, not 3,000. The reason Columbus thought it was much closer was because he erred in calculating the size of the globe. In one of history's most momentous mistakes, Columbus concluded that the Earth is far smaller than it actually is. Contrary to myth, neither Columbus nor his crew feared that they might fall off the edge of the world. The ancient Greeks knew the Earth was a globe two millennia earlier, and educated people and sailors in Columbus Day had no illusions about the Earth being flat. The issue for Columbus was not the shape of the Earth, but the size of the ocean he planned on crossing. In addition to screwing up the calculations, he did not know or had reason to suspect that an unknown continental landmass lay between Spain and Asia. Few mistakes have changed the world as much as Columbus' math mistake. Not many mistakes have had consequences as far-reaching as Christopher Columbus' math mistakes, he eventually reached the Caribbean, whose islands he believed were the western outskirts of Asia. So he named them the West Indies. In subsequent voyages, he explored the Caribbean and the northern coast of South America. When not exploring, he was governor and viceroy of the Caribbean. In that capacity, he really treated, enslaved, and decimated the native population, whom he incorrectly labeled Indians. To his dying day, Columbus insisted that he had reached Asia. Ironically, the new world discovered by Columbus would not bear his name, but wound up being named after another Italian explorer, Amerigo Vespucci. Amerigo mapped the eastern shore of South America down to Brazil, and demonstrated that what Columbus had reached was not Asia, but a hitherto unknown world. A German mapmaker labeled the New World America after Amerigo. His maps were quite popular during the 1500, so the name America spread and stuck. Series of Mistakes Doom a Well-Planned Raid During World War II, American air commanders planned a raid on the Pliesti oil fields and complex in Romania, which furnished the Nazis with a third of their fuel. The plan was for B-24 Liberator heavy bombers, without fighter escort, to take off for a 2,000-mile trip north from Libya across the Mediterranean, then turn northeast towards Pliesti upon reaching the Greek coast. On August 1, 1943, which came to be known as Black Sunday, 177 Liberators took off from Libyan airfields. The plan was good, but it was wrecked by cascading mishaps and mistakes. Maintaining radio silence, the B-24 skimmed over the Mediterranean, flying at 50 feet or lower to avoid German radar, then flew at treetop level upon reaching land, however. The Germans were alerted and the raid came to grief because of a series of misfortunes and mistakes. First a navigation error took some bombers directly above a German position. Then a lead navigator crashed, and the bombers following him arrived over the target staggered, instead of simultaneously. A Disaster of a Raid AB-24 group leader finally broke radio silence, 
when he saw that all formation was hopelessly lost, to salvage something from what was shaping up to be a disaster, he ordered the scattered bombers, to make their way to Pliesti individually and bomb as best they could. Unfortunately for the American airmen, the liberators were met by alert defenders. Hundreds of anti-aircraft gun, heavy machine guns and a specially designed train whose car sides dropped to reveal flat guns, opened up on the bombers, while fighter aircraft savaged them, the low-flying B-24s also had to contend with industrial chimneys suddenly looming in their path amid the billowing smoke. Of 177 B-24s that took off that day, 162 reached Pliesti. Of those, 53 were shot down for the loss of 660 crewmen. Of the 109 liberators that made it back, 58 were beyond repair. The damage to Pliesti was quickly repaired and within weeks, the oil complex's production was higher than it had been before the raid. Sailing without binoculars turns out to be a huge mistake. The supposedly unsinkable Titanic, history's biggest passenger liner at the time, famously struck an iceberg and sank on its maiden voyage, there was not one single mistake, but a series of mistakes, each reinforcing and amplifying the other mistakes, that made the Titanic sinking so deadly. However of all those mistakes, there was one that if had been avoided, might have averted the whole tragedy. It began just before the Titanic sailed from Southampton to New York on April 10, 1912, when the Titanic's second officer, David Blair was replaced with the more experienced Charles Lightoller. However Blair never got around to giving, and Lightoller never got around to asking for, the keys to a locker that contained the ship's binoculars, so the Titanic sailed with lookouts who lacked binoculars. During the days-long voyage before disaster struck, nobody figured that binoculars might be necessary for lookouts. If they did, then in an even more astonishing display of mistaken priorities, they did not deem the safety of the ship worth breaking the lock to get the binoculars. Oversight leads to deadly tragedy. Four days into the Titanic's voyage, around 11.40 p.m. on the night of April 14, 1912, lookout Frederick Fleet spotted an iceberg in the ship's path and alerted the bridge, the officer in charge ordered the engine stopped, and the ship steered around the obstacle. Unfortunately given the distance to the iceberg when the alarm was sounded, the titanic speed at the time and the ship's mass, disaster was inevitable. Basic physics made it impossible for the mammoth ship to maneuver away in time to avoid a collision. The unsinkable titanic struck the iceberg, and sank. Of the 2,224 passengers and crew aboard the ship, over 1,500 lost their lives, making it one of modern history's worst peacetime maritime disasters. In the subsequent investigation, lookout Frederick Fleet testified that he would have spotted the iceberg sooner, and the ship would thus have had more reaction time to steer away from the iceberg, if he'd only had binoculars. The Controversies Surrounding the Atomic Bombing of Japan After World War II, critics of the atomic bombing of Japan claimed that it was unnecessary, because Japan was about to surrender, supposedly, the Allies simply had to blockade Japan, and the Japanese government would have given in. However the war was not confined to Japan's home islands, where the Japanese could have been isolated. At war's end, Japan still held an extensive empire in the Pacific and Asia, in which hundreds of millions were subjected to a barbaric occupation. Additionally millions of Japanese soldiers were still fighting Allied forces in China, Burma and in the Pacific, whether or not the Japanese homeland was blockaded, the war still went on beyond Japan. Also the Japanese held hundreds of thousands of Allied POWs, whom they treated brutally. In short every day the war continued was another day in which millions suffered, and in which thousands more became casualties. So Japan's enemies were justified in treating her as a formidable foe who was inflicting significant harm every day and would continue to do so indefinitely if not stopped. History's Deadliest Translation Mistake the Allies were not mistaken in dealing with Japan as a menace that needed putting down ASAP, however a simple mistake in translation might have determined when and how the U.S. went about putting Japan down. It led to the atomic bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. As such it might have been the most momentous translation mistake in history. It began with a proclamation defining terms for Japanese surrender, also known as the Potsdam Declaration, which was issued by the Allies on July 26, 1945, America which had successfully tested the atomic bomb 10 days earlier, along with her allies, issued a blunt statement calling for the surrender of all Japanese armed forces.
it was an ultimatum warning Japan that if it did not surrender, it would face prompt and utter destruction.